Good evening, friends. It's a great privilege to be here tonight in this auditorium to minister to God's children, to the sick and the afflicted, and to minister to the unsaved in the way of salvation. And we're sorry that this has to be our last night in this special campaign, a series of these services. But we certainly want to thank each and every one of you for your wonderful cooperation, for all that you have done for us, given us your faith and your all that you have done. We appreciate it from the depths of our heart. Only eternity will tell how that we appreciate. And we want to be grateful to our brother Cobbles for his uh, sponsoring us here in the city and for the fine cooperation we've had with him and his church and his people. And we thank all of you who've come from different places, from Indiana and around states about. It wasn't even advertised out there. I guess you just got it through the mail somehow or to be here. Because we know we wouldn't have room much in that church. And we thought if it got too bad, then maybe we could find a night or two at the auditorium. Now, we're grateful for the people who let us have this auditorium tonight. For, uh, we appreciate that, for them opening up this place for these services on this Sunday night for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank him. And now, just as I was coming in just now, my brother and Billy and some of them are standing out there told me that there had been adequate uh, enough sufficient of the funds to pay off all the debt. They paid off the rent on the church and the newspaper and the custodians of the church and the music and all the newspaper advertisements, the radio broadcast, everything has been paid up till tonight. I think they had enough. So that left the night love offering free for me. That I have always tried to keep, as you know, a reputation about money. We uh, don't do that. And if there's not enough to take care of the things, then I'll take it out of my love offering. And the love offering, I wouldn't even take that if I wasn't a poor man and had to live like the rest of us do. <clears throat> if I could work and still run these meetings across the nation, I'd never mention a love offering for myself. Just the expenses to be paid is all we require. And that's not only been in Louisville, that's been around the world. And as long as I live and God will help me, it'll remain that way. Not money. I'm not after money. I'm trying to get the people to believe the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation and for their healing. And your tithings and so forth that you've put in this last week has gone for that purpose. And on Sunday night, they usually are the last night of the meeting, whatever it's a week or two weeks, ten days or whatever, where they take a love offering for me. And if there would be something in there that would be left over, it would go right straight to foreign missions. Perhaps my secretary and them who takes care of the money and so forth are setting present now, uh, and my wife and them who know that that's the truth. And Almighty God, who is our judge, knows that to be true. And so we're thanking you for everything that you have done. Now this being the closing night of the service, now we start tomorrow for Shreveport, Louisiana, to begin there in the municipal auditorium for uh, the services, the next uh, service is to begin there. Then we go from there to Denver, Colorado, where the Christian businessman of Denver sponsors us there in a, a campaign. And uh, I believe it's the Civic or the City Auditorium there. No church is sponsoring it, just the Christian businessman. And then from there we go to, to Edmonton, Alberta. And then from there to Grand Prairie, British Columbia, Dawson Creek, on up into the Eskimo land. And we get back down then again around to begin down here in the States again around June, which will be over in Des Moines, Iowa, and we go to Methodist campgrounds at Cedar Lake in the convention there, and then on over to the Pacific Northwest, and then from there to Durban, South Africa. This time... It isn't my choice, my setting. It's thus saith the Lord. And to go to Africa, India, Palestine, Luxembourg, Frankfurt, Germany, and London, 
and then Paris, then back home. Then from there we are getting around January, February, we go to New Zealand, Australia, and to the east. Now I'll be expecting prayers to be coming from Louisville, Kentucky, in support of this meeting that we're going a itinerary. One of these times, if I happen to get back even a year from the day, there's many sitting here tonight, perhaps won't be here if I'm spared in an audience of this size, or a thousand people or more, whatever, there'll be there'll be many of you'll be gone. Then I'll meet you again some of these glorious mornings at the resurrection. When the saints that are redeemed are brought back to earth again for the great millennium, I hope to spend an endless eternity with you in the kingdom of God to which I represent here tonight. God bless you all. And I don't want to leave out anyone, the little ladies that plays the music and all oh, everyone. God bless you. Now, it's my lot tonight to speak just a few moments again. And I don't know what time we have to close the auditorium. We're getting started just a time at 8.30. Maybe speak a half hour. Then start our prayer line. Praying for the sick. And now you dear Christian people here of Louisville, Kentucky, and Jeffersonville, New Albany, one of these days, I would like to advertise the meeting nationally and have an old, big old tent set out here to seat several thousand people and have an old-fashioned revival. That's what I think we need in Louisville is an old-fashioned, God-sent revival. You pray. If the Lord leads that way, I'll come. Now, there's two or three healing campaigns going on in the city. That's the reason we never made it no national affair. We just come to Brother Cobble's church. And we didn't come here to be competitors to these other brethren. We don't believe in being competitors to the religion of Jesus Christ. We are brethren together, working together for all that we can for the good of the kingdom of God. And every church, everyone, we might differ a little bit on ideas of ministers, but not to the people. We are still believe the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We become sons and daughters of God by confessing our sins and accepting this blood, no matter what church you belong to. Amen. And we believe that with all of our heart. Our services is always inter-evangelical or inter-denominational. So we trust that God will bless you all. Now, in standing mainly in a city or a place we are not here to represent divine healing. We're not even featuring divine healing. We're featuring Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And when you feature Jesus Christ, you feature divine healing because it's the attribute of his death what gives us salvation and healing for our bodies. And there's no, no power within any man that can heal another person. Healing has already been purchased at Calvary, and only thing that we can do is point man to where that one time all-sufficient sacrifice was made by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In there, we just look and live. God made the way, and we accept it. A minister couldn't save no one. He could only preach the gospel, if he's anointed of the Holy Spirit, and point people to the place where they were saved. They were saved 1,900 years ago at Calvary. You have to accept it as your personal Savior now to have benefits or dividends off of his death and enjoy the attribute of what he died for. Now, and divine healing is the same thing. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, chastened of our peace upon him. With his stripes we were healed all in the same day by the same man, inseparable, run parallel one to the other, the blood coming from his back, the ones coming from his wound, mixed together and run off of his feet. See, that's it. Salvation, healing, peace, satisfaction, joy, everything that we have need of in the earthly journey was met in Calvary. And God will minister to everyone who will accept it upon those bases and believe it with all their heart. Now, God said in the church, 
some teachers, apostles, prophets, gifts of healing, and all different kinds of gifts. He put that in the church for the perfecting of the church, getting the church together. And now days has passed since the first round of the apostles. They had all the nine gifts working in the church. The second round, they begin to cool off. The third round is about all gone. Then went out into the 1,500 years of dark ages. Then come the Reformation. After the Reformation comes sanctification. After justification comes John Wesley preaching sanctification. In there come Calvin Knox and all of those who came down into the Pentecostal Nazarene that age. And now we're moving right on into another great age coming for the rapture of the church. Amen. And in this, we're living in the time of the restoration of the gifts. It stumbled many of the big fine churches. It sent Nazarene backward. It made fanatics out of a lot of Pentecost. But just the same, God's moving right on bringing in the rapture and faith for his church. Right. So, tonight I represent that faith, the faith that was once delivered to the saints in the way of a divine gift, which, to my opinion, gifts and callings, not my opinion, but the Bible says that gifts and callings are without repentance. Amen. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't make yourself with blue eyes when you got brown. you just what you are by the grace of God. You can't even come to God without God calling you first. You can't seek God without God seeking you first and calling you. No man can come to me except my Father draws him. So God is seeking. God has set in the church. And then from a little child born here in the state of Kentucky, vision just comes to me just the same as, as eating or anything else. It's just as God will, he provides it. I just do as he tells me to do. Certainly I have many critics. I have many people who disbelieve it. No matter what would take place, they'd disbelieve it anyhow. I expect to have that. And if I didn't have that, I'd go down to an altar somewhere and say, Dear Lord, what's wrong with me? For all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. We must have it. That's right. So Jesus had it. And he said if, when he could stand in his audience and know what the people was wrong and how were they was healed or not? And they touched him with the, their faith when he turned and said, Who touched me? He said, Your faith has saved you. Now your blood issues stop. Your faith has made you whole. A woman come to him one time, or he was standing where she is at at the pool or the uh, drinking place, the well, Jacob's well, and a woman come and he carried a conversation with her for a few moments until he found her trouble. He said, Go get your husband. She said, I had none. That's right, you have five. He when he was sure, he knew where a fish was, had a coin in his mouth. He knew where two mules would stand hitched at, or where two ways came together. And he knew where a man would be packing a pitcher. Many things that he knew. He knew Philip when he come to him, and he'd been praying before he come under a tree. Knew that he was a good, righteous man. But he said in his own words, I can do nothing of myself until the Father shows me what to do. All that believes that scripture say amen. amen. Yes. That's what St. John 5, 19. He passed by a big multitude, two or three thousand people in there, crippled, twisted, lame, halt, blind, withered, full of love and compassion, walked right by every one of them, healed a man with some little disease like, oh, I don't know, he might just been subject to bad colds for all I know. It, he had it 38 years. It wasn't going to hurt him or kill him. He was retarded. And he made that man whole and walked away and left that multitude laying there. And then when he was questioned, he said, I can do nothing of myself but what I see the Father doing. Now, sometimes people want him to clown with that when they seen he had that power. They asked him, Herod said, do me a miracle. Let me see you do something. And he asked him to speak for himself. He stood like dumb before chairs, like a sheep dumb before the chairs. They wrapped a rag around his head one day, a bunch of critical soldiers, and hit him on the head and said, Now, if you're a prophet, if you know all these things and so forth, tell us who hit you. Do a miracle for us. When Satan first met him, Satan said, Now, if you'll do a miracle for me, I'll believe that you're the Son of God. Turn these stones to bread. Let me see you do it. 
Jesus just quoted the Scripture right back to him. And then every time Satan wants to see him do a miracle, the people who's possessed of Satan wants to see him do something for me. Let me see you heal this one. Let me put a scratch on your hand. You heal it, and I'll believe you. There you are, the same evil spirit that said, Come off the cross now, and we'll believe you. Your hands are tacked up there. You're calling Elijah. Let's see him come deliver you now, if you found so much favor in him. And God, let's see him deliver you. Come off the cross, and we'll believe you. Do a miracle before us. Miracles has always stumped the unbeliever. But just the same, our Heavenly Father is a miracle-working God. Amen. Okay. Everywhere he's always been, whatever his ministry has been, where he's had his ministers, there's been signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, the Lord bless you. While I read a text of Scripture here for a few moments, and then we will go into the service and then right to the healing service. Now, look, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he said, Now, the things that I do shall you do also. More than this will you do, or greater, for I go to my Father. Now, yet a little while, I'm quoting Jesus, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many Christians in here tonight believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and lives tonight? Let's see your hand. Well, if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, won't he produce tonight in his church the same thing he did in his church when he was here on earth in flesh? See? It's just the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's here in a spiritual form just as much alive as he ever was. Here living in us, performing the things that he did when he was here on earth as a confirmation of his being with us. I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. The Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, tonight get glory, Heavenly Father, out of our efforts that we're trying to put forth for your glory. Now, here lays the word here on the pulpit, opened up, but who can understand it? When it's written by inspiration, promised that it was hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent, and would be revealed to babes such as would learn. Now, Father, we pray that you let us consider ourselves babes, not knowing anything, that we might learn some things through the revelation by the Holy Spirit. May you take the Word of God now and give it to every heart as we have need. Or we ask it in his name. Amen. And Genesis, just a little warm up here, I guess it is out there also, that the custodians will give just a little air in the building so the people will feel just a little better. I see some of them fanning. Now, in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, I want to draw your attention to a few words here just on the close of this meeting of the gospel, I always like to say or read some of the word here because this word will never pass away, Amen. and it's eternal forever. And if I would say anything about a text for tonight, I wish to speak on this. God has a provided way. He has a provided way of approach to him. He has a provided way of escape. And he has a provided way for everything we have need of. If we can only find that way God has provided, then we're sure to get it. If God, if this building was provided here to take care of, keep the rain off of us, as long as we get into the building, then we're out of the rain. If God has provided a way for salvation, we can find that provided way, we can have salvation. If God's provided a way of divine healing, then we can find Get in that way, we find divine healing. If he provided peace for the unstable, then if we get in that way and find his provided way, we can have peace. Now, reading from the seventh verse of the 22nd chapter, notice this now. Great dramatic story here before us. 
And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, Father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of that word. I might read and respond to that, the 14th verse also. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said in this day in the mount of the Lord shall it be seen. Jehovah-Jireh was God's name of redemption. God, the word Jehovah-Jireh means God will provide himself a sacrifice. God will make a way otherwise. Now, God had seven compound redemptive names, Jehovah-Jireh and jehovah Manassas and Jehovah-Raphi, the healer, and all these different compound names that he had, what he was, representing what he was to the people. And this provided sacrifice tonight, Jehovah-Jireh, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. The great dramatic story laying before us as, um, as we move in now, may the Holy Spirit take these next few words and bind every heart. Now, this is the last night of the service. I want each one of you to give me your undivided attention Amen. and listen close now. We're trying to go in for the greatest victory of the meeting. This is the last night. Usually there's more people healed on the last night than there is in the rest of the meeting. The great anticipation. Satan fights harder. Everything goes wrong, seemingly, because Satan is trying to keep that people in tension and everything else so that he can keep them away from this great time of strain that we're now entering into for the great, as we say, going in for the kill now. He's already beat up in the corner. He's been exposed and all of his devices is exposed and men and women has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. People with cancer and tumors and, and everything else has been healed. Doctor statements proving that it's the truth. Amen. Now here sets a group of people here tonight sitting, waiting under great anticipation. And Satan, if he can interrupt your mind, that's all he has to do. But let's go in now for the great kill just now to drive Satan and all of his powers plumb out of the building that God can have the right of way and heal every sick person for the glory of God. Now, Abraham, the patriarch, come down out of Shinehire, away from the Tower of Babel. He and his father journeyed down into the, the plains. And there, Abraham, at the age of of about 75 years old, God called Abraham by election and sent him out of his own country, telling him that he was going to have a child by his wife, Sarah, who was 65 years old at the time. God promised. I want you to see how God's promises are so real to those who will accept it. And he told him what he was going to do. And he moved out, not knowing where he was going, but sojourned in a strange land. God, when he calls people, he calls for total separation yes. from all the things of the world. Annihilation from the worldly things. Separate yourself, and God will bless you. Come out from among them. Be not partakers of their sins. Yoke yourself not up among unbelievers, but yoke yourself with believers fellow citizens of the kingdom. And Abraham had to take his wife and leave the country. But he believed God by faith. You couldn't reason it out. There's no way of finding how he could ever do it, how this woman lived with her since she was a young girl, both of them young, healthy people, all these days till she was then 40, 50, 60, probably 25 years of past menopause. And God said, you're going to have a baby by this woman. And Abraham believed God. 
against all reason, against all scientific research, even to this day. How could a woman 65 years old have a baby? But God said she's going to do it. So Abraham believed it. So he went out not knowing where he was going. And finally, after Sarah got to be almost a hundred years old, Abraham still believing. I want you to see it. Still believing that God was going to keep his promise. He had everything ready for the baby. And finally the youngster arrived. God always does it that way. He brought the baby just in due season. The longer it went, Abraham figured, well, I didn't get it today, I didn't get it this month, I didn't get it last month, but no matter how long it is, the longer it is, the older I'm getting, the more of a miracle it'll be. Amen. Give God praise for it. Amen. Instead of being weak like we'd be, prayed for tonight, get, get healed, said you got worse tomorrow, you said, oh, well, there's nothing to it. That's the reason you can't keep God's Word. <laughs> Thy Word have I hid in my heart, O Lord. David, hide God's Word away in your heart, and then God will keep that Word. God has to keep His Word. God doesn't have to heal to prove His power, but He has to heal to keep His Word. That's right. God don't have to prove nothing. He's God. But what He speaks, He's obligated to His Word. So are you and I, obligated to our Word. And God's obligated to His Word. So if divine healing's in the Word, that settles it. Amen. If He was wounded for our transgressions with His stripes, we were healed. That was a sacrifice. That settles it. As far as I'm concerned, that's all. If God did it there, promised He'd do it, that settles it. That's the way it was with Abraham. No matter what come or went, Abraham believed it anyhow. Perhaps got everything ready for the youngster. Then God let him go till he was a hundred years old, turned him and Sarah back to a young woman, young man again, and gave him the baby. There. What a beautiful picture. Now we have before us under consideration. Here's the youngster, becomes about 16 years old, 17, the very heart of this old man and woman. Lovely, the little fellow. Now God speaks to Abraham one night, said, Abraham, take him up there to the mount and offer him up, kill him. And yet God had promised Abraham that through Isaac, all the nations of the world would be blessed. How is he going now, after all these years waiting, believing, and now after all this time has passed, how is the baby the only hope of God's promise and God told Abraham to destroy every hope he had again? See how God does? Testing. God permits you sometimes to get a little worse after you're prayed for just to test you, yeah. the testings and trials of faith. But he that endureth, there he is. Yeah. Hold on. The Lord. Take God at his word. Believe every word of it. No matter what anything else says or does, believe it anyhow. Yeah. No matter what the circumstance look like, believe God anyhow. Then, there God says, you take the boy and take him up there. I'm going to bless all the world with him. You've waited for all these years. Now you're 100 years old, about 116, 18 years old. Now I want you to take the little fellow and take him up on the hill there and kill him. My, all seems very strange, unreasonable, that God would ask Abraham to destroy his only son. But behind it now, we see the picture. He was painting God giving his only son. Abraham didn't want to tell the mother, of course, it would break her heart, saddled up some mules and taken a few servants and rode off to the mountain. I just love this part here. Then he got up to where the mount was, and he said to the servant, you wait here now while the boy and I go yonder to worship, and the boy and I will return. How is he going to return when he's going to kill him? But Abraham knew this, that he had received him in a figure as one from the dead, and God was able to raise him up from the dead. God would make a way of escape some way. How? He didn't know. God told him, take him and kill him, and that was his only thing he had to do. You wait here. 
The boy and I will go yonder to worship, and the boy and I will return. Notice, little Isaac picked up the wood, went up the hill, the father leading, Isaac behind with the wood on his back. Look at it. Beautiful picture of some 800 years later, God leading his own son up Calvary with the wood on his back for the sacrifice. Picture God making a way of escape. Now, and when Abraham got up on top of the mount, rolled the rocks together and built the altar, laid the wood down, the little lad said, Father, he said, Here am I, son. He said, Here is the altar and here is the wood, but where is the lamb for a sacrifice? And Abraham, with trembling voice, said, God will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. Look at that dark moment. Yet faith unadulterated wouldn't let him disbelieve God. Notice, oh, I just look at this story sometimes and weep for joy. Abraham bound his own son's hand, laid him up on the altar, pulled a knife from his belt, and was ready to take his son's life because God had told him to do so. And at that time, a voice screamed from the heavens, said, Abraham, stay your hand. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit caught his hand, said, I see that you haven't withheld your own son. I know you love me. Amen. And about that time, something began to blate over in the wilderness, caught up over there, and there was a little ram. God provided a sacrifice. Watch, a ram. It had to be a sheep, a male, a ram. Type of Christ who would take the place of death. There's God provided sacrifice. And Abraham offered up the sacrifice in Isaac's stead. What a beautiful picture now. Notice, God always made a way. He'll make a way tonight for every one of you. In Israel, when they were down in Egypt, they were in bondage and in trouble, and they began to cry to God for deliverance. Notice, the way God will provide is when we're in God's Word. Israel had God's word that they were going out of there someday, so they went to crying to God according to the will of God, for God to provide what he had promised to do. There you are. You're praying for something that's out of the will of God, you can't have faith for it. But when God promises anything, I believe that he'll keep his word. Amen. So they knew. That's the reason Abraham knew that God was going to deliver him somehow because he had promised that through Isaac all the nations of the world would be blessed. The children of Israel down in Egypt, they knew God had promised them deliverance, so they went to praying for the promise. You say, Brother Branham, if I know divine healing that God had promised it, all right, let's take it just a moment. James 5.14, if there ain't a healing campaign in the city somewhere, he says, if there's any among you sick, let him call the elders of the church of Norman all and pray over the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. That's God's word. Amen. God's provided way. Amen. That's right. Notice, when Israel began to cry, God began to hear and provided a way of escape. Amen. Amen. Sent Moses to him. How strange it was. After crying for deliverance, and when deliverance was brought to them, they failed to recognize it and refused it and had to suffer 40 years more. Isn't that typical of the day? God will bring you something and you'll get scared of it. God sent the Holy Spirit to you people who didn't like all this formal church, ritualistic religion. God sent you the Holy Spirit. Great groups of them are scared of it. The disciples were about to sink one night in a little boat and bounced around out on the sea and they were crying for help. And when they seen the only man that could stop the waves coming, they were scared of him and thought he was a ghost. 
the only hope they had, they were scared of it. There's men and women sitting here tonight with cancer, heart trouble, dangerous diseases, no doubt. And the only hope that you have after your doctor's done, done all he can do, you're just as scared to reach out and trust him. Don't be scared. Take his word. Stand right out there. It's God's provided way for you. God sent you here tonight for that purpose. He never sent you here tonight for me to pray for you. He sent you here tonight to accept his provided way. Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice for sin and sickness. I hope you get it. Notice, they cried for deliverance. God sent them deliverance. They had to wait 40 years again to receive it. In the wilderness, God promised to supply everything they had need of. They got out of bread. And the same Jehovah Jireh, God will provide the sacrifice to Abraham 400 years later was still Jehovah Jireh to provide everything that his children had need of. Here it is. I want it to go way deep on the left side under the fifth rib. Listen, he's still Jehovah Jireh. The Lord provided sacrifice. Accept it. Don't just try to reason it out. Don't try to reason. You can't reason. God's ways are a path finding out. You don't reason God. You don't know him by knowledge. You don't know him by education. You know him by one thing only. Faith. You can't reason. It's unreasonable to believe that you can reason it out. You can't. You just have to accept it. Notice again in this great tremendous time, they run out of bread. What are they going to do? If God told them they was going to the promised land, it's up to God to take care of them until they get there. And the very Jehovah Jireh was right with them. And then when they run out of bread, Jehovah Jireh provided a way of bread all the way through the wilderness. Manna rained out of heaven. They run out of water. What's the use of wearing? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord's provided sacrifice, was right with them. And he smoked the rock, and they spake to it from then on, and waters come abundantly. Water all their cattle, thousands of gallons per second. Pouring out of a rock in a dry desert. Unreasonable, isn't it? But God provided. You don't reason how he does do it. He just does it because he said he would. How could a patient laying dying with cancer? The best of doctors says that there's no hope at all. How could they get well? It's unreasonable. But he's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord's provided sacrifice. How beautiful. One day... They got sickness in the camp. They had no, probably no medicine treatment. What was Moses out there with all that group of people? About two million of them, old and young and sick and all. When they come out of the wilderness, there wasn't a feeble one among them. But now notice, when they were out there and they sinned and snakes began to bite them, there was nothing they could do. And God, and while he, Moses speaking to him, provided an atonement. Yeah. Told Moses, go get a piece of brass. Make a serpent out of it and put it on a pole and it will come to pass. Whosoever shall look upon this serpent will be made well. Yeah. Beautiful type again. The brass, the serpent itself spake of sin already judged. Eden, when God pronounced the judgment up on the serpent, it was already judged. The brass speaks of divine judgment on the brazing altar where the beast's bodies were burnt. After the blood was taken, every 9 o'clock at morning, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, gallons of blood were thrown on this altar over the bodies of the dead beast. Black smoke rose up. Every Jew in Palestine fell to his feet, his hands towards heaven, and as that smoke ascended up, his prayers went with it. All right. Divine judgment. 
the bodies burnt on a brass altar. Just like in Israel, when Ahab had caused Israel to sin, and Elijah went out to look at the skies, three years and six months, no rain, he said, it looks like brass. Divine judgment. In Revelations, when they seen Jesus in Revelations 1, his feet looked like brass. Divine judgment. The serpent spake of divine judgment. And to appease God, his judgments are divine. And then the pole represented the cross. And the serpent represented Jesus. The lovely Lord Jesus, he came down and was made sin. God himself revealed himself in a body made like unto sinful flesh to take away sickness and sin from the world. How beautiful. And there he made a way. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. Now, what was the brass serpent lifted up for? For a compound reason. They had sinned and were sick. Now, then Jesus is lifted up, wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Compound reason. And it's still just as real tonight for Christ to heal the sick as it is to save the sin. More of a miracle for him to save a sinner, he has to change his ways. And surely after he's already changed, he will know how to believe God for his healing. Amen. See what I mean? Another beautiful type. Quickly, I've happened to think in the book of Ruth. Many of you run over the top of that book. Don't think, not thinking what it is. That's one of the most greatest Stories in there of a type of Christ in all the Old Testament. In the first chapter of, of the book of Ruth, Neoma. The word Neoma means pleasant. She, her husband, and her two sons left Palestine. Type of the church. And they left Palestine, went over in the land of Moab. And there they homesteaded out of the homeland. That's a, a symbol of backsliding, like Israel did. Any Jew that left Palestine was out of the will of the Lord. God gave Palestine to the Jews and said, remain there. And Ruth went out, or not Ruth, but Neoma, and her two sons got married, and all the man died, her husband and the two sons. She started back to her home. Her daughter-in-laws went part of the way with her. One of them lifted up her eyes and looked back into her homeland. She went back. But Ruth, the Moabite, she wouldn't go. She loved her mother-in-law. She said, go back to your own people. I'm old, and if I'd had more children, why? You know the laws, that how it had to be in them days, you Bible scholars. Said, if I would have a child, it would be, you'd be too old for it when it grew up. So go back and can remarry. Oh, I love this. Neoma now, the type of the Jewish church, Ruth, the type of the Gentile church. Notice. And now here she comes back. See, Ruth, being a Gentile, heathen worshiper, she looked back and she said, I'll go with you. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. Let your God be my God. Amen. That's the Gentile church accepting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Notice what a beautiful picture. And now, wish we had time. The second chapter in Ruth reveals her time to return. When she come back, just in harvest time, barley season. And when she seen, looked over the homeland, she wept. I just longed to get into Palestine. Yeah. See, Amen. They were weeping as they seen the homeland. Those Jews by the thousands pouring into Palestine. Yeah. That's the calendar of the day, brother. Yeah. I tell you, we're living at the end of the road. 
I wouldn't be a bit surprised that there's many people sitting here in old age you'll see the time when there won't be one stone left upon another in Louisville, Kentucky. Amen. That may be in another year. I don't know. Don't say I said a year. I don't know. No one does. But we're at the end of the road. Amen. I know that. Amen. Those hydrogen bombs and things are ready to explode any time. The Jews are going back to Jerusalem and the six-point star of David, the oldest flag in the world, flies over Jerusalem the first time for 2,000 years. Amen. Sign time. And notice, just as Neoma, who lost everything she had and was returning back just in barley season, and Palestine today is becoming to blossom like a rose. Amen. Some of the greatest things is found Riches of all the lands of the world. Chemicals found in the Dead Sea that's priceless to mention. Yeah. Palestine, greatest citrus country. Lemons will weigh five pounds apiece nearly raised there. Think of it. All fulfilling God's divine word. Yeah. Going home, the Jews returning in barley season. She raised up her hands and wept. And they said, here comes Neoma. She said, don't call me Neoma, for God has dealt with me bitterly, not knowing what she was bringing with her. Little does the Jew know that his rejecting of Jesus only gives the Gentile a place to come in. Oh, I just love it. Notice, then when she lifted up her eyes and wept, and notice, then they had to get all of her inheritance had been taken away from her. So they had to make a living. Ruth, being a young, beautiful woman, went out into the fields of Boaz to glean. That was what the peasants did. The poor. I want you to notice the type the church is. It's a poor church. Ruth being a type of the Gentile bride now. She went out behind the harvesters to pick up a few straws that had some wheat on it, shuck it off like that in a sack for a living, gleaning barefooted in the fields of Boaz. And Boaz was the Lord of the harvest, representing Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Notice the great Lord of the harvest. And he came out to look upon his fields. He saw the gleaners out there. He saw the reapers. And when he cast his eyes towards Ruth, he fell in love with her. Amen. Christ with his church. He said, Who is this damsel that gleans in the field? They said, Ruth brought her back. The Jewish church under the leading of the pillar of fire under the leading of Jehovah made a way of the Old Testament yes. for the Holy Ghost Christian of the New. Amen. Brought her with him. Oh, we had time to rest on this a little bit. Notice, coming back, then he said, have her to come over and sit under the shade and eat some of the food with us. Oh, if we had time to put some emphasis on that. Notice, then Boaz looks upon her, seeing she's a virtuous woman. That surely must have been holiness. So he walked around and said to all of the reapers, he said, now you, when this young lady is coming behind you, not letting her know it, said, but now when she gets behind you every once in a while, Drop an extra handful so she can get it. Oh, my. Going around, having a little meeting over here in a cottage prayer meeting. Laughed at, made fun of by the others, the other reapers. Picking up a straw here and there and shucking it out. Getting a little blessing here and driving 50 miles for another. But I'm so thankful for a great big handful once in a while. The little born-again church finds in an old-fashioned revival a handful. 
She'd pick this up, I uh, guess, and say, Bless the Lord. Shucked it out. And at nighttime, she had a sack full. Boaz, representing Christ, goes to the city quickly. He didn't want this girl to get away. Said, Who does she belong to? Said, Neoma. And the Orthodox Jewish church gave birth to the Gentile church. Amen. That's right. Said, who is she? Said, she's Neoma. So she goes down, he goes down. He said, now, I have got to redeem all of her possessions. Now, the law of redemption in the Old Testament, that it must be a kinsman redeemer. The, the law required not any person could redeem a lost estate. But it had to be somebody that was kin folks and then somebody that was able to redeem, worthy enough to redeem, financially able. How beautiful. Oh, my. Christ, worthy, double worthy. The King of heaven, seeing the little... Holy Spirit-filled church, dropping a little handful now and then. Notice, the only way that God could redeem, God had to come down and be made kinfolks to us. God was in spirit. God come down and was made flesh. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Then in order to redeem man, he had to become man. Ken folks, could you imagine deity coming down made flesh? Love. What will a young man do for his young bride that he wants for a sweetheart? He's blind. He'll do anything. Yes, sir. He wants her. Nothing can stop him. He's going to have her. That's the way God did when he seen the church. He loved her. Nothing was going to stop. He was ready to give his life. God moved down in a body of flesh. Amen. Worthy the king of heaven. Make kinfolk. Then God, after he come into flesh in Jesus Christ, become a kinsman redeemer. Watch Boaz. Now, before he could have her, he had to ask if there was anybody near kinsman that could take it, take her. So in order, there was no one could do it. So then he had to make a public testimony before Israel that he had redeemed Neoma, and he redeemed Neoma in order to get Ruth. Oh, my. He came to his own, and his own received him not. <laughs> but he had to redeem Neoma to get Ruth. See? Oh, what a beautiful picture. Tell me God's Word's not inspired. Every bit of it speaking of the coming. And Ruth, now waiting. And Boaz, the king of the harvest, or the Lord of the harvest goes outside the gates and calls all the elders of the city and made a public testimony outside the gates. He said, see to it, all of you people. He took off his shoes, kicked it off before him as a testimony, said, I this day have redeemed all of Neoma's lost heritage. And all of her possessions is mine this day. Oh, my. Get ready. Here it is. Oh, I just feel something moving. Notice Christ before the elders of Israel led outside the gates of the city and made a testimony. He was wounded for our transgressions. 
With his stripes we were healed. A public testimony, he's redeemed the church. From what? Her lost estate. In the Garden of Eden, we didn't have any sickness. The Garden of Eden, we had no sin. The Garden of Eden, we had no death. And God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, made a testimony outside the gate that he had provided a way of escape for all who wanted to come. Amen. What a beautiful picture. I hope you can see it. Now, the Lord be blessed. And as I see, maybe my time is getting away. God making a provided way. And he made it in Jesus Christ. When Jesus went up Golgotha's hill, wounded, bleeding, the cross dragging out the bloody footprints as he climbed the hill, went up there, public testimony, he was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes. We were healed, died, ascended on high. You believe it? Yeah. And sent back spiritual gifts to the church, Amen. making a provided way. And this joy that we have in our hearts now is only the down payment, the earnest money, on what it will be when we're fully redeemed. And this divine healing we have now is the earnest on our redemption of our body. We are redeemed. God made a provided sacrifice. I have to stop, friends, because people are getting up and going out. I said to my wife the other day, I have preached in about, I don't know how many different nations, in every city throughout the United States and uh, Louisville, Kentucky is the only place that people ever got up and went out when I was preaching. It's right home, see. Only place I ever seen. If anybody's noticed that, there's been in other meetings with me, raise up your hand over the building, sure, around everywhere else. I never had it nowhere in my life but here at my own home place, Louisville, Kentucky. People get right up and go out when you go to laying the gospel right to the Ewing line. They'll do it. And I've never had it nowhere else, anywhere in the world I've ever been, even to Africa, all the other places, Sweden, Norway, where tens of thousands sit. In my humble opinion, I have never one time witnessed one person leaving, getting up and going out while preaching. Only right here. You see, friends, this week I have battled hard to try to convince some of the people that Jesus Christ's words, no matter what it is, has to be right. He said, a prophet's not without honor except among his own people, his own county. And that's exactly right. Amen. They just won't receive it. I don't know why Jesus said so, and that settles it. I got people around this country that would almost be willing to die for me. They love me. But in the general whole, it's God's Word, and God must keep His Word in order to be God. Amen. That's right. And anybody that's been in the meetings before outside of here, we've had the fewest signs and miracles that's been done in any meeting I've ever seen of this time, of this long. Usually there's blind, deaf, dumb, cripples and everything, wheelchairs piled in the corner and people going places and cots and stretchers. And as only as far as I know, there's been two people sitting here. I've seen one of them before this boy here, sitting here, seeing the Holy Spirit standing where the other night come very near. I could pr pronounce this healing. It just as a forced I got through preaching, but I've seen it drop back away from him again. Something crossed his place there and kept it from him. As the only person that I've seen even afflicted in any way outside of a couple of deaf people or something come to the platform they told me about, I don't know. But there you are. It's home. It's around your people. Now to my good friend, Mr. McSpadden, Mr. McDowell, and those who are sitting in the building tonight, who I've tried to tell this to, and you people at Jeffersonville out of the tabernacle, do you see what I speak of? Amen. Amen. You can't change the Word of God. Amen. It'll be forever that way, because Jesus said so. Now, and to the people that were begging me to come back to the tabernacle, do you see why? We've probably been 50 people saved this week around here. In a revival, maybe not that many, maybe not ten, for all I know. 
where ordinary in eight days it would build into the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds somewhere else. See? See the difference? It's home. It's among your people. Not because that they don't love me, but because Jesus said so. And when he went to his own people, the only thing he could do was to lay hands on a few sick folks and heal them. No mighty works he could do. Is that right? That's quoting Scripture. And that's the way it has to be. That's right. It isn't me after all. It's him. It's just him. If I was a healer, I got a brother laying in a hospital tonight that God showed me a year ago, and I guess there's 200 witnesses right here, the boy fine and healthy, but God sent a vision and said he's going, and no matter what comes to pass, he's going. The doctor said not long ago, we can save him, but they didn't, and they won't. I seen the Holy Spirit come show the vision and mark his grave and said he's an excellent. That's the way it'll be. How many heard me say that long, long, long time ago? Raise your hand. That's right. When the boy's big, stout, and healthy, he just must go. That's all. How? Well, if I was a healer, I'd heal him. That's my own. My own brother. But when God has said, God will keep his word. And that's the reason I know what thus saith the Lord. I'll die by it. For it's God's word, and he will keep it. He's provided a way, and I'm glad to accept it tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you? May his eternal blessings rest upon you. Now again, I say, God's provided sacrifice tonight. The way of escape is through Jesus Christ. Then Jesus Christ provided a church for the unbelievers that they could come in and see the manifestation of his resurrection and know beyond a shadow of doubt that he rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead, making a provided way for whosoever will might look and live. But if you refuse to look, how can you do anything but die? Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. That's true. Friends, I've always tried to keep a balance of the road. You get way off on formalism, just as formal and ritualistic as it can be. People have grabbed for that lot. Then if you don't watch, you'll get come off over on their side and be just as fanatic as you can be. But there's a middle of the road where the true, sound, sane gospel is preached and God moves in there vindicating the truth. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way, but few there will be that find it. All right, to you little group of people here tonight, seated here, may God's love overshadow you tonight. And especially the sick, needy, I pray that they will not be one of you, but what will go home well. If I could do anything about it, I'd gladly do it, but I can't do it. The only thing that I can do is represent him to you in a way of a divine gift. Now, if I speak the truth that God provided a sacrifice, and that sacrifice, Jehovah Jireh, was Jesus Christ and all of the seven compound redemptive names laid in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord's provided sacrifice. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord heals our diseases. And the Jehovah the Banner and, and all the other seven compound names was all in Christ Jesus. Amen. And there's where all the types and the shadows of the Old Testament all come and met in Jesus Christ. He paid the supreme price, ascended on high, and sent back the Holy Ghost tonight, which is God's provided way of your escape. We had time to go in it. I can see the wise men packing up their camels right quick. Where are you going, honey, says the wife. I'm going to see the young king that's born way in Palestine. Well, you didn't even take your compass. He said, I don't need any compass. How are you going through the deserts and valleys and hills without a compass? He pointed up to the star and said, I'm going God's provided way. Amen. The star led him right straight Amen. to Jesus. And listen, before we close, God has a provided way here tonight. Amen. Not through church, not through theology, but through the Holy Spirit. Amen. will lead you to God's provided way of your sanctification, the healing of your body, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the joy, peace, and everything you have need of. Jesus Christ 
is God's provided sacrifice. And I say that he rose from the dead, sent it on high, sent back the Holy Ghost as God's provided way to lead the church. He said he will not speak of himself, but he'll testify of me, Jesus said. And when he comes, he'll bring these things to your memory and will show you things to come. For the things that I do shall you do also. Amen. The world won't see it, but you'll see it. I'll be with you even in you to the end of the age. Amen. Here at Louisville, my last message to you, God's provided sacrifice is Jesus Christ, the resurrected one here, empowering the church by the Holy Ghost. This is the light. Walk ye in it. Find rest to your soul, healing of your diseases. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, oh God, when day way down deep in my soul I wonder, as I'm made to wonder, of seeing this great, beautiful nation of America and seeing those big bombs out there being laid up across the sea, wicked, ungodly man, denying God, denying the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, with all the wickedness and mischievousness and devices that Satan can push into their mind to destroy this world. Do just exactly like you said. It would burn it with heat. And even the great scientists of the world saying that in ten years there will be a total annihilation. No one left, nothing living on the earth, swept across by the hydrogen bomb. Oh, God, men and women sitting here unprepared tonight. You've been this week glorious to us. We've sat in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We thank you for these dear saints in Louisville. God, may they go from this meeting with a voice of warning to all around. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll send somebody in here with an old-fashioned revival that will break down the walls around Louisville. Oh, do God. May many loved ones be brought to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I did my best, Lord Jesus, all that I know how to do, giving a voice against sin as hard as I know how, and thou has been more than glorious to us. You've confirmed every word with signs and wonders. We thank thee. Now, Father, for the results, we commit it all to you. Let your will be done. Bless Brother Cobbles, Lord, our brother. Bless all of his staff and all the other ministers. We think of little Brother Durbin down here and these other brothers around here who's fine brethren, trying their best to hammer away against sin and wickedness, whiskey and drinking and carrying on and rallying and everything around the city. They're trying to give a voice of warning. God bless them, man, and anoint them with the Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. May they be good stewards, having great success of calling the people out of darkness into the marvelous light. And now, Lord, in the closing service tonight, won't you come? Come just once more, great Holy Spirit, power divine, and overshadow us with thy blessing. And may the angel of God stand here at the platform as a witness of the resurrection of God's provided sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ. And may he do great signs and wonders in confirmation of the word, for we ask it in his name, thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> may the Lord bless you, Christian friend. Now, I want to pray for the sick. I want to ask you now, just beforehand, is there one person present in the building that hasn't been saved, has never yet as, even as much as been converted, asking Christ to forgive their sins? 
I'm asking you openly, just rugged way. And I believe that you'll be man or woman enough or boy or girl to do it. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and want to do it now, will you stand to your feet as a believer and say, I now from this hour will be a believer in Jesus Christ? God bless you, sir. God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. You're confessing your faith in Jesus Christ as you do this. About five souls would have died five minutes ago, would have went black eternity. If they die now, they're covered by the blood. One more. Where is it? Right in the back. God bless you. Yes, my brother. God bless you, brother. That's, God bless you. God bless you, sister. That's right. This old rugged, God bless you, brother, accepting Jesus. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Up in the balcony, somewhere, God bless you, sister. That's wonderful. Oh, my, I wish we had some room here for an old-fashioned mourner's bench and an altar call. It's what we need right now. How many in here says, Brother Branham, I have been a sinner, but now I'm confessing, accepting in my heart Jesus Christ, God's provided sacrifice. About two dozen have stood. Will you stand and say, God, God bless you. God bless you, young man. That's fine. God bless you. Someone else stand and say, Now, I'm accepting Jesus Christ right now as my Savior. I'm making this confession openly before the people and before God that I now accept God's remedy for my sins, Jesus Christ. Will there be one more over here, anywhere? God bless you, young man. That's Gallant. God bless you. That's fine. Someone else would stand and say, I now accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I take God's provided sacrifice for my sins. God bless you, Dad. Age, man, gray-headed, trembling, raises up to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, God knows your heart. He's looking right at you. God bless you, young man. I've seen you there with a red sweater on. Raise up. All right, someone else, raise up and say, I accept. God bless you and you. A uh, lady and a young boy up there, God bless you. May God, your name goes on the Lamb's book of life. When you stand publicly before this audience, he that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. If you're ashamed of me here before man, I'll be ashamed of you at that day. Have you been sinful and want to be forgiven? Any other person that hasn't stood yet and wants to stand just to accept God's provided sacrifice for your sin, would you stand? Some, God bless you. God bless you. That's the soldier boy. God bless you over here, too. The Lord be with you, my brother. Would someone else? All right. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sister. That's fine. Someone else wants eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Three of you up in the balcony. Isn't that marvelous? Some 30 or more now. All right. God bless you. That's the way accepting Jesus, God's provided sacrifice. He's Jehovah Jireh. All right. The Lord bless you in the balcony, my sister, giving you eternal life. Now you're finding favor with God. There's not a Christian in here that knows anything about God, but knows that the last five minutes, the atmosphere's changed completely in this building. That's right. See? Just in the darkest of the moment, then Jesus comes along. Someone else say, I now accept Jesus Christ. I, God bless you, lady. I accept him. My name wrote on his book. I accept him right now as my supreme ruler of my life. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Someone else, a backslider, would stand up and say, I once was a Christian, Brother Branham, but I've traveled away away from God. Tonight I'm coming home. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. Oh, God sees you. God bless you, lady. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. That's right. Oh, my. God bless you, brother. I see you in the balcony. God bless you. God bless you, brother, with his hands up. Somebody else, God bless you, lady. That's wonderful. God bless you, sister. That's wonderful. That's just keep coming. If God bless you, sister. I see you standing. God bless you, sir, up there on the platform with your hand up. God bless you. In the back, way back in the back, would somebody say, Brother Branham, I now have backslid. I'm coming home. I accept 
my remedy, Jesus Christ, the provided sacrifice for my backsliding. I'm coming home right tonight. I settle it right here now and forever. And I know that when the... Open wide thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more. if we could hum it. Mm. While they're humming it, is there one here left would say, Lord, you see me as I stand. I'm coming home now. I'm tired of this roaming around unsettled peace. I'm accepting your way out. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I now come, Lord, just as I am. I'm coming. Raise up my hand. I'm going to stand up and let you see in this audience that I now believe and am coming home. Mm. God bless you, sister. Coming home. Coming home. Nah. Ever who feels in their heart that they want to accept him, just stand to your feet. Oh, unwind thy arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. Just continue on, if you will, sister. I'm going to ask you something now. Every person that stood, I want you to stand to your feet while I offer prayer for you. Every person that stood up, stand again just for a few moments. Just stand up everywhere over the building. Everybody that stood, stand again everywhere, balconies and everywhere, that we can offer prayer. That's it. That's it. Every one of you that stood, that stood up a while ago, if there's any more that wants to stand with them, accepting Christ, will you stand now? God bless you. Let's bow our heads now. Kind Heavenly Father, these are now coming as your children. They have already come. The moment that the Holy Spirit spoke to their soul, they stood and accepted you, and you gave them everlasting life. God bless them. Walk with them through life, Father. Some of them had been your servants times gone by, but had fallen away. And tonight, the Holy Spirit, by the preaching of the Word, come down and anointed them, and they now stand accepting you and giving you thanks for their eternal life that they now possess in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. May their life be happy and pleasant. May sickness stay away from their door, and may they live long, happy lives and come at peace into the kingdom of God at the end of the world. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. God bless you. And the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless each one. If you're sitting near someone who raised up, shake their hand, Christian, and tell them how happy you are for them. We haven't got the place here to call them up around the altar. We just haven't got the, the room here to do it. The Lord bless you. Many, many souls. Now, you know, according to the Word of God, what's happened in heaven at this time? Angels are rejoicing. The black flags of Satan has been defeated. They're down and chased out. And the angels and their white victory flags are flying through heaven tonight. And the bells of glory are ringing, just ringing melodies as one sinner coming to Christ. The Lord be blessed and praised forever. Oh, my. I just believe we're going to have a real healing service now. Yes, prayer cards. I, this servant, 
take every spirit in the building under my control for God's glory. The reason I say that, that puts the name of Jesus Christ over the whole audience. If Satan would get unruly, you'd see what would happen. You'd probably pack them right out the door, out of this world. See? Now, so you must be obedient. Don't get up and walk around. Sit still. These diseases go from one to another. You know, Bible scholars, that's true. Not playing church now. And I'm not responsible for critics or unbelievers. Hear it, I speak in his name. Now, the angel of the Lord near, I trust that God will manifest the resurrection of his son. Now, you come near. I suppose, sister, you and I standing here together, that we're strangers to each other. I don't know you. I've never seen you. But God knows both of us. You're just a person that was brought up out of the audience. Some of them give you a prayer card, had a number on it. You just got your number and just called, and here you are. And you don't have to have the prayer card. Anyone sitting in the audience, just start praying. See if the Holy Spirit just isn't the same tonight that's on the church that was on Jesus Christ. See if it isn't. If it isn't, if it isn't, then I have misrepresented the gospel to you. Then I become a false witness of the resurrection. If God confirms it to be the truth, then I have told the truth and God has said it's the truth. Now, the lady here, a stranger, never seen her in my life. She never seen me, I guess. We just met here, that's all. I don't know her. God does know her. Now, when our Lord Jesus is here, he talked to a woman one time he had never seen in his life. She was getting some water to well. And he said, bring me a drink. And he talked to her long enough to catch her spirit. Then he told her where her trouble was. And she said, well, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now, Jesus said, the things that I do shall you also plumb to the end of the world. Amen. A man come in his prayer line one time. He was a righteous man. He said, you are a Christian, a good man, an honorable man. He said, when did you know me, rabbi, or reverend, teacher, whatever you interpreted? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. In other words, you prayed before you come to the meeting, and I've seen you doing it. He said, thou art the Son of God. You're the King of Israel. Now, if Jesus has risen from the dead, then he'll do the same. Now, audience. Now he is here, Amen. the angel of the Lord. You're aware of that now? Amen. It's something happened just then. Isn't that true? Amen. Yes, sir. It is here. Now to heal you, I couldn't. Your life you could not hide. For you're not in the presence of your brother. It's in the presence of him. Isn't that the truth? And you believe him with all your heart that God has sent us here to try to help you. Besides being sick yourself, you have a loved one that's sick. That's, right. that's your husband. He has a rupture, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. You're both healed. You can go home now. God be with you and bless you. God bless you, sister. Simple faith touched and healed a woman. Come. How do you do, sister? Suppose we're strangers to each other. We don't know one another. And I'm just your brother. It's for your baby is what you're here for. A dark shadow hangs over the baby. Its disease is incurable as far as doctors is concerned. Do you believe he would reveal to me what's wrong with the baby? With all your heart you believe it? There's been some sort of a hospital experience. The baby has had an operation, and it's something in the bowels, and there's some kind of a bone or something there that's wrong, and the baby's got a swollen liver now. Isn't that true? That's the truth, isn't it? Now, that wasn't me that said that. That was just fully surrendered to Jesus Christ and his presence this year. Now, the only thing I can do is ask God for your baby. You accept the baby's healing. Christ, Son of God, have mercy on this dying child. 
may it be made well this very night. Grant, Lord Jesus, that your blessings come upon it, and it'll be well. For I ask this in Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, Mother. Let me hear about the baby. What, what happened? You're going to find a difference in the next 24 hours. I remember what I told you. He who knows what was knows what will be. All right. Come, lady. You're believing with all your heart. You believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is here to heal and to make well. You believe me as his servant. You're conscious that you're in the presence of something besides man, and that's his spirit. The audience may not understand this, but what's the expression on the patient's face when they walk near here? Not because it's me. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just a voice. But this woman here, or any of the rest, understands and knows that there's something supernatural here, and you can see it as a miracle. What is a miracle? Something that's not understood. Now the woman is stranger to me, and I to the woman. No, not each other. First time in life to meet, perhaps. But God has fed us both since we were born, lady. You believe that the same Lord Jesus that talked to the woman at the well, that I have represented here tonight, that 300 or 103 souls accepted him as Savior? You believe now that he knows your heart and knows everything you've done. If he will reveal to me what you are desiring now, will you accept it? You write it. Is that right? You believe me now? Now, here's something else. You're interested in a loved one, which is a boy. And that boy has heart trouble. And he's a member of a church here in Louisville, a Baptist church. Go. The Lord Jesus bless thee and grant to thee the desire of thy heart. Amen. They praise the Lord. Amen. Just be reverent. Accept, believe. Now... I see a lady, colored lady, setting praying. She's got kidney trouble. You don't have it now, lady. Your faith has made you whole. Stand up. God bless you. Just believe with all your heart, you shall have it. The Holy Spirit. New Testament religion. Amen. You believe that blood pressure will leave you, sir, sitting there looking at me? Yes. All right. You can have it. God bless you. Just believe him. Amen. Have faith, sister. Sitting there looking this way, praying too. Got something wrong with your throat, haven't you? Sitting right back behind that little girl there. You believe that God will make you well? The little lady sitting here. You're sitting there praying for me to say something to you. I know it's your throat condition. You don't need your, no prayer card. You just need what you got, faith. Do you accept your healing now? God bless you. You go home and get well now. Amen. Have faith. Believe with all your heart. Jesus Christ will bring it to pass. Oh, I love him, don't you? Amen. All right. Come, mister. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. God shall bring it to pass. How did you do, sir? Was you one of the standards a few minutes ago? I see it still light around you. You accepted Christ as your personal Savior. You're suffering with a nervous condition. Isn't that right? You've had a bad habit, smoking. God don't want you to do that. That's hurting your nerves, making you do that. Isn't that the truth? You want to get over it? You forsake cigarettes? You've forsaken everything? 
Jesus Christ has already touched your body, and you're going to be well and serve him. You believe now? That you might know this, you're not from this city. You're from out of town, aren't you? You're from Indiana. You cross the river. You're from a city called Greensburg or something like that, Indiana. Is that right? Now you're all right. You, now you can go home. Be well. God bless you. The audience, be reverent. Be in prayer. Be expecting God to bless and to heal. Amen. Have faith in God. You sitting there, ladies, your finger up like this, suffering with a high... You believe that God's going to heal you that low blood pressure you got? You believe it? Yes. You believe he is? Stand up on your feet then, accept it. It'll leave you and you go home and be well. Amen. You say, what did that? The same Jesus Christ that turned to the woman with the blood issue said, Thy faith has saved thee. Said, He knows all things and He reveals it as He will. All right, bring your patience. Have faith. How do you do, sir? You believe me to be his servant? You believe you're in his presence, not your brother, but you're aware that something is going on. Someone said I was reading their mind just then. That is wrong. Jesus Christ perceived their thoughts. Is that right? Amen. The people's not thinking of their sins and things that they did. It's the Holy Spirit. All right, look this way, sir, and believe. Are we strangers to each other? We don't know one another. Probably never seen one another in all of our lives. This meeting. Just this meeting. That's right. Then if there's anything about you or anything, your sickness or anything, only God would know as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. But I see you being taken to a hospital. you are just come out of a hospital. There's something wrong with the blood, carpuscles breaking or something. And you've had, I see in a bed, and there's some kind of something hanging up by you. It's something drip. It's blood. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blood transfusions you've just had. Is that true? That's right. It is the truth. You've got a wife that's sick. Yes, that's right. She's got arthritis and liver trouble. Is that right? That's right. And you're not from this city. No. You come from up the river. That's right. From Cincinnati. That's right. Ohio. Yes. It's the Lord. Your name is Burgess. That's right. RP is your initial. That's right. Return home and be well. Jesus Lord. Christ right. has made you home. Have faith in God. Telling him his name? Didn't Jesus Christ tell Peter, thou art Peter? Now be reverent, friends. Visions make you so weak. You've been in the meetings this week, and you know what I'm speaking of. Just have faith in God. Believe. And there was something... Just a moment. I see a lady before me. No, it's, it's this lady sitting right here at the end. You're, it's not you. It's a different-looking person. It's a loved one that's in a hospital, and they got cancer. And it's a lady, and she's in a dying condition. And she is your sister-in-law. Is that right? If it is, stand up on your feet now and accept healing for your sister-in-law in the hospital. The Lord Jesus Christ, you knows all about it. All right, sister, you clapping your hand rejoicing. You had something wrong with your hands, didn't you? All right, they're healed now. You can go home. And you sat next to her there. You had gallstones, didn't you, lady, sitting there? Stand up on your feet. You can go home, too, and be made well. They leave you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just believe all things are possible to them that believe. Have faith in God.
bring the lady. You believe, lady, as you come? You accept Jesus as Savior and accept me as his prophet? Then, if that be so, and I've testified the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he who stood and talked to the woman at the well noted exactly what was wrong with her. He said, go get your husband. She said, come see a man told me everything I ever done. He never told her all she ever done. But he noted as the Father would reveal to him all she ever done. Is he the same resurrected Lord Jesus? You've had an accident. No, you've got a, something like it's a... You have been... If the Holy Ghost is what you're seeking. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And you've got to... I've seen something. You've got, a, you've got a high blood pressure too, isn't it? Just a moment. A vision appeared before me. Oh, it's a woman sitting there. Praying. It's you that had a... You hurt your foot, haven't you? An accident and hurt your foot. Is that right? And you got kidney trouble. Is that right? Come on across with the lady. You're both going to be made well. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, the glorious, matchless Lord Jesus Christ, who saved your soul just a while ago, is vindicating his presence. Amen. Check on your tape recording and see if what he says isn't the truth. Oh, have faith in God. Believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. All right, Billy, is this your patient? Bring him on. Believing with all your heart. Got a loved one's in trouble too, haven't you? They're not here in this city either. Got some kind of jerking at the San Fidus of Dance like. Is that right? And they live in a city where there's a river. It's a big city, and as the river goes by the side of it, there's a lot of brick. It's St. Louis. Is that right? It is right. And you've got another relative, which is a sister or something. And she's from a country that's got hills in it. Evergreen trees. It's Arkansas. You've got heart trouble. Go. Your desires is granted to you by Jesus Christ, the, the Son of God. Let's say praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, the one from Calvary. Be reverent. Don't stir. Just a minute. We'll close in a few minutes. Don't stir around like that. It makes it interfere me. I'm having here tonight watching be reverent let the lady come you believe you could get well by faith and that tumor would leave you without being operated you believe it with all your heart you accept it now in Jesus Christ's name, may it be to you as your faith has said. Amen. <laughs> Sir, sitting there in the red town, you're suffering with a, a rupture. You believe that the Lord Jesus makes you well? You accept it? You're from out of town, too. I see you come from up the river also, Cincinnati. Isn't that right? All right. While you're dual working, both stand to your feet right now and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. It leaves you. Go home, be well. Come, lady. Having faith. You believe that female trouble has left you? You accept Jesus as your healer for it now? That was an abscess, a drainage. 
and it would have pretty soon been to cancer. But your faith has saved you now. Go give God praise for it, and you shall have anything you ask for. Come, sir, believing with all your soul. If God will reveal what's your trouble, will you accept your healing? Heart trouble. Is that right? You believe he heals you now? Then he does. Your faith makes you whole. Go in God's peace be. Come, lady. You believe God will heal that baby as I come across the platform? You got kidney trouble. Go now. Jesus Christ makes the little lad well Amen. in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You was nervous. That's bless you also. Amen. God be with you. You believe in? Amen. Have faith in God. You want to get over that bronchial condition? You believe God heals you of it? If you believe it with all your heart, stand up on your feet, lady. Accept your healing. God bless you. You can go home now and be made well. All right, you believe with all your heart? Will you accept your healing if Jesus Christ speaking will reveal your trouble? We're strangers to each other, but he knows your trouble. You have a lady's trouble, female, the woman ovary. Now go, God has made you well. Your faith saves you, lady, in Jesus Christ's name. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every one of you can be made well at this time if you'll believe. Now, ladies, stand where you are. Look this away. This whole audience, a big percent of them suffers of that nervousness. Sometimes you think you're going to lose your mind, don't you? You get so nervous. Recently, you drop something as a dish or something is going across with it. But now, Jesus Christ has healed you from it. And you're aware of that. Now go on your road rejoicing. Now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I challenge every believer in here to believe that this is the truth. Do you believe it? Well, then, if this be God's vindicated truth, hear me. Lay your hands over on each other while I pray for you. And I want every person in here now to accept your healing. Almighty God, be merciful to the sick and the needy. Standing here in this whole room seems to be one big pillar of light now. Amen. Knowing someone standing here with their hands around me, laying up on handkerchiefs, bless them, Lord, to the healing of the sick. Amen. All these needy people here with their arms and hands laid on each other. May the power, God's provided way, the Son of God, in His great power and majesty, sweep over this building like a rushing mighty wind yes. and you know, condemn every disease, Amen. cast out every oh, evil spirit. In the name of now I condemn Satan, oh, claim God. victory over him just now, Amen. and come out, Satan, of these Amen. people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let everyone in here that believes that Jesus heals them stand to their feet and give God praise in Jesus Christ's name. God in Jesus Christ's name, they now accept their healing. Amen. 